up to this point, Star Trek Discovery has revisited the Trill homeworld, found the Federation, and made a difference in their new century. Now it's time to put the focus on Philippa Giorgio from the Mirror Universe. Welcome everyone to Killer TV Reviews, and we are going to take a look at parts 1 and 2 of Terra Firma as a complete story. We'll go over what happened in the episodes and afterwards give you our list of killer awesome things that we liked about it and killer awful things we didn't like. Please note that this review will include spoilers, so you might want to stop now and come back after watching both episodes. Dr. Kolber and Kovic are discussing what is happening to Giorgio. Kovic explains that there is nowhere in this galaxy that will have a cure for what is ailing her, and he asks the computer to pull up a holographic file of Yor, a time soldier, a being from the year 2379 who not only crossed time but also dimensions. Kovic explains that molecules are only designed to function in the time and dimension that they were created. The Discovery crew would not be affected as much since they are still in the same dimension. However, Giorgio traveled over 900 years and is from a parallel universe, one that has continued to drift further and further apart from the Prime universe. Refusing to give up, Dr. Kolber asks the computer, which has all the knowledge from the sphere data from Season 2, if there is a solution for Giorgio. The computer states that there is. Giorgio's health continues to get worse as her molecules begin to lose cohesion. Even so, she refuses to admit that she's becoming weak and needs help from anyone. In a meeting, Dr. Colwell reveals that the computer has found that Giorgio's cure is on a remote planet at the edge of the Gamma Quadrant and Galactic Rim called Dana's 5. Colbert states that Georgia has a 5% chance of living if she has taken to the planet. Although Saru is sympathetic, he states that they cannot go due to the fleet being put on alert for military activities by the Emerald Chain. Admiral Vance, however, approves the mission to Dana's 5 and later explains to Saru that if he doesn't save the one crewman that is in trouble, then the crew will never be able to see the captain the same way again, or himself. After Burnham explains the mission to Giorgio, she ruthlessly retaliates and nearly kills Burnham, but stops just short of it, explaining that she wants an honorable death. Burnham convinces Giorgio that the honor she is looking for is down on that planet. Burnham gives her a bracelet from Dr. Colbert that will monitor her condition. As long as it is green, she will be fine. Discovery arrives at Dana's 5 and Giorgio says her goodbyes before beaming down with Burnham. On the surface of the planet, Burnham and Giorgio do not see anything other than ice and snow, so they follow the directions the Sphere Data had given them. Up on the ship, Adira is still having trouble with the algorithm that will tell them what is at the origin point of the burn, which wiped out the majority of ships in Dilithium long ago. Stamets notices that Adira hadn't restarted the algorithm after doing a diagnostic. After doing so, the algorithm finishes and they are surprised at what they find. In the corridors, Book talks to Captain Saru and offers his willingness to help. Saru advises that there are Federation protocols that they need to abide by. However, Book will have his chance to prove himself when the moment arises. Back on the planet, Burnham and Giorgio meet a mysterious being who is reading a newspaper and calls himself Carl. He tells them that the answers Giorgio seeks is through the door that stands before them. On Discovery, Stamets and Adira were able to recover a message over a hundred years ago from a crashed Kelpian ship. Their mission was to investigate a dilithium nursery inside the nebula. Saru orders Stamets to find out what is going on inside the ship by hacking into their internal sensors. Saru advises Tilly that they'll wait to inform the Admiral until they have more to report on. On the planet, Giorgio is willing to take a chance based on the sphere data sending them here. She steps through the doorway and in an amazing twist of events, she returns to the Terran universe and before the events of Gabriel Lorca and Michael Burnham betraying her. She is greeted by Captain Killy, who we meet for the first time, and she informs of the plot against the Emperor's life. This is the day that her adopted daughter, Michael Burnham, will try to kill her and take her throne. In the mess hall, we finally meet the Mirror Universe version of Michael Burnham, and Giorgio is happy to see her daughter once again. 
While conversing, the mirror version of Saru offers his master, Michael Burnham, a glass of wine. Offended, Michael orders Saru to be executed, but Giorgio intervenes and takes Saru back as her own slave. In her chambers, she reveals her knowledge of the Kelpian Vahari to Saru in order to gain his trust and ask that he be her eyes and ears. At the dedication ceremony of the new flagship Charon, Emperor Giorgio is presented with her new seat of power. During her speech, Stamets attempts to assassinate the Emperor but fails, since he was a pain in the neck. After Burnham leaves, she is greeted by Captain Killy, who would just love to pull the trigger on a phaser. Giorgio arrives and tells Michael that she knows she is involved in a plot with Lorca to kill her, and Stamets was part of it. Giorgio offers to spare her life if she confesses. Michael laughs it off, tells the Emperor she is weak, and that she should execute her for betrayal. Giorgio pulls out her sword and swings to slice Michael's head off, but she stops short, drawing only a little blood. She tells Michael that the future is unwritten and that they can make a new future. After that, she orders Michael to be taken to the agonizer booth. In Giorgio's quarters, Captain Killy asks why Burnham is still alive and taken up air on her ship. Giorgio states that there is no better way to send a message to her co-conspirators than a broken Michael Burnham who has been reforged into a loyal subject. She gives that honor to Killy, who was the most feared interrogator in the Quadrant. Day by day, Michael is tortured over and over again. She refuses to eat, but Killy has Dr. Culver force feed her to keep her alive. Detmer visits Michael in the brig and asks that she give in because no one has heard from Lorca and she doesn't think he's coming. Giorgio visits the unconscious Burnham in the brig and says that she can change just like herself. She recounts a story when Michael was young and used to sleepwalk into a field of fireflies which would calm her. Giorgio leaves a globe of fireflies next to Burnham and hopes that it will calm her and convince her to swear her allegiance back to Emperor Giorgio. In time, Michael breaks and swears allegiance to Emperor Giorgio and says she will name her co-conspirators and execute them. Giorgio tells Michael to take Detmer with her to help. Their first target is Landry and after she is killed, Michael takes her insignia as proof of her death. In time, she presents the badges of Landry, Bryce, and the rest of the co-conspirators. But there was still one left, and Michael turns with her knife and stabs Detmer. Over dinner, Burnham states that she doesn't know where Lorca is and that he left her for dead. She says she'll have no problem killing him when he finds her. As Saru grooms the Emperor's hair, he asks her to call him because Vaharai is near for him. She refuses and tells Saru to lock himself up because it will pass in a few days and he will be changed forever. She knows because she has witnessed it. On the bridge of Discovery, Georgia oars the ship to a system to retrieve Duggan, one of Lorca's top lieutenants. They disable his ship and Giorgio demands to know where Lorca is. He refuses, so they beam him directly to the brig and destroy his ship. Giorgio, Burnham, and the Honor Guard arrive at the brig where Dr. Colbert is waiting with the prisoner. Duggan tells the Emperor that she can't trust Burnham. Burnham responds by shooting him in the head and then turns the phaser on Giorgio. She tells Giorgio that she should have never trusted her, and Giorgio responds that she never did. At that time, Killy arrives with reinforcements. Giorgio knocks the phaser out of Burnham's hand, and Kelpians who survived the Vaharai show up to defend the Emperor. Mira Saru even picks up Colber and throws him to the ceiling. Burnham is ready for a fight to the death with Giorgio, but she ends up on the losing side of Giorgio's sword. However, Giorgio did not come out unscathed. She pulls Burnham's dagger from her neck. Saru goes to the aid of his Emperor. She recognizes that he passed through his Verharai, and then Giorgio realized that she herself has passed through the doorway. Confused, Giorgio asks what day it is. Carl shows the newspaper and that the headline has changed. Emperor Giorgio's fate is uncertain. Giorgio demands to know who he is and that he had sent her back to Terra for months. She asks if it was even real and she finds the answer on the device around her wrist 
which recorded three months' worth of data. Even so, it hasn't cured Giorgio and she still suffers from temporal sickness. Burnham asks who the man really is. He reveals himself to be the guardian of forever. Upon discovery, Stamets and Adira are unable to hack into the computer systems of the Kelpian ship. He asks to have more power transferred, but then Jet Reno shows up and tells him to stop stealing her power supply. Stamets makes the comment we've all been thinking, where the hell has she been this whole time? And explains what he and Adira are doing under Captain Saru's orders. Book arrives with an emerald chain device from his ship that will help give them the power they need to hack into the Kelpian ship system. Back on the planet, the Guardian explains that he's a space-time portal and that he is in hiding because people were trying to use him during the Temporal Wars. Giorgio continues to struggle with her sickness. The Guardian explains that Giorgio was sent back not to be cured, but to be weighed, or tested to see if she would make the same choices. Even though she still killed Michael, she had saved the Kelpian who will save others, and she tried for peace. It was a test that Giorgio passed, and the Guardian prepares the portal to send her back to a time that will no longer be harmful to her health, and where the Terran and Prime Universes are closer together. It'll be a time in this universe, the Prime Universe. He says that Michael cannot go with her because she is where she needs to be. Michael and Philippa say their goodbyes, and she steps through the portal. On board Discovery, Saru gives an update to Admiral Vance on what they discovered. Saru receives a message that Burnham is returning, but just her. Book leaves to meet with Michael, while the Admiral and Saru continue their conversation. Vance believes that the Kelpian vessel was a distraction to Saru since he hasn't seen anyone from his own kind since they arrived in this time. Saru assures that he is not distracted and only wanted to wait until he had more substance to report before contacting the Admiral. Michael sits down alone with Saru and explains that Philippa is gone and will not return. In the final scene, the crew of Discovery mourn the loss of Philippa Giorgio and what she meant to them, even if it was the Mirror Universe version. Now that we've gone over the story, let's talk about 16 killer awesome things of these two episodes. Number 1. The Kelvin Universe is officially canon. When Kovic was explaining who the Time Soldier Yor was, he mentioned that he was from a different timeline that was created by the incursion of a Romulan mining ship, which was seen in the 2009 Star Trek reboot movie. There's also a nice Easter egg of Yor wearing the Starfleet uniform, which dates back to the first and second seasons of Star Trek The Next Generation. Number 2. Time Travel is Hazardous to Your Health we get an interesting twist on time travel when Kovic explains that it can make the traveler very sick, assuming that person has traveled a lot, more so if they are from another dimension. What an interesting concept that our molecules are only designed to function in the time and dimension they were created. Number 3. The Needs of the One At a time when it has been hard for us to trust Admiral Vance and what this century's federation is, we get a pleasant surprise when Vance encourages Captain Saru to save his crewmate and to learn from his mistakes. Number 4. Extra Extra Read All About It A nice nod to the original Star Trek and foreshadowing of things to come, we see Carl reading the news from a paper called The Star Dispatch, which is the same newspaper that Kirk and Spock saw in the original series episode, The City on the Edge of Forever. Number 5. Return to the Terran Empire The Mirror Universe and Terran Empire have always fascinated me, and it was my favorite moment in Season 1. We return to it in Season 3, and we are more immersed in their culture than we were before. Number 6. Captain Killy We heard about her in Season 1, but never had the pleasure of meeting her with the exception of the Mirror of Discovery storyline in the game Star Trek Online. Until now. I wasn't disappointed and hope we'll see more of her in the future. Number 7. Evil Robots I just love how the service robots are made to look evil with glowing red eyes, unlike their prime versions. Number 8. Evil Incarnate I found it quite refreshing to see Mirror Universe versions of characters who we barely know in the Prime Universe, 
but see a lot more of in the Terran universe, such as Reese and Owosikon. When in Rome, Terrans have a love for theater and poetry, much like the Romans. It was interesting to see this at the dedication ceremony of the Charon. Number 10. Tantalus Temptation Although not confirmed directly, I believe the device in Giorgio's quarters is a Tantalus field, or something similar to what Mira James T. Kirk had. Not only could Emperor Giorgio spy on anyone she wanted, but Captain Killy made the comment that she could kill Michael Burnham with just a push of a button. Number 11. Mirror Opening Credits In the opening title sequence for Part 2, we see everything as a mirror image that is flipped upside down and colorized as blue, the opposite of yellow as seen in the normal title sequence. Number 12. Badge of Honor I love the idea of the Terran insignia also doubling as military dog tags that has the person's name on it. Number 13. Two Ariums are better than one. Not only do we get to see the second actress to play Arium without the cybernetic implants in the Mirror Universe, but we also get to see the original actress that played Arium, who now plays Lieutenant Nelson, also in the Mirror Universe. Number 14. The Real Guardian When Carl revealed his true identity, I had shivers up my spine when I heard the original voice of the Guardian from the original Star Trek performed by Bartel LaRue. It's not food, it's candy. Probably the best quote so far from Jet Reno. I'm definitely going to remember this one for myself. Number 16. Satisfying Character Arc Philippa Georgia's character, I feel, has the most developed character arc in the series. Good writing leads to good characters who have growth and change over time. Sometimes they grow into something better, and sometimes they grow into something worse. But they are never the same from the beginning to the end. Even she recognizes the change within herself and didn't want to return to the Terran universe. Now let's see if they can fully flesh out the other characters in the series. With all things that are awesome, there's always going to be things that are not. Let's go ahead and talk about the six killer awful things in this episode that either I didn't like or that bothered me. Number one, burn it already. The burn is one of the greatest mysteries in season three, but they are really taking their time getting to the point. Even the writers realize it when they put in a scene where Adira had forgotten to restart the algorithm and wasted so much of their time. Were they apologizing to the audience, perhaps? Number 2. Lorca is missing in action. Such a wasted opportunity to not bring Gabriel Lorca back. I'm sure many fans would have loved to see him on the screen again. Even if the mirror Lorca is in the Prime Universe by this time, this would have been the perfect opportunity for us to meet the Prime Universe version, assuming they switch places. Number 3. Part 2 opening credits needs more. Although I like that they did something different for Part 2, it's not as impressive as what was done for the Mirror Universe 2-parter in a Mirror Darkly for Star Trek Enterprise. I would have loved to see Terran references in the opening credits. They didn't even show the Terran Empire symbol. Number 4. The Mirror ABCs I wish we would have seen more of the Mirror Universe versions of Arium, Bryce, and Colbert. A missed opportunity to give us more insight into these alternate personalities. Number 5. More Jet, please. Jet Reno is one of several underutilized characters, and I miss her snarkiness when she's not on screen. It's almost as if the writers are aware of it too, because Stamets even makes the comment that he hasn't seen her since the beginning of time. Number 6. Time Portal or Wormhole? Although it was really, really cool to see an updated version of the Guardian of Forever, it reminded me more of a wormhole. They could have shown images of the history of the Prime Universe, such as clips from all of the older Star Trek series, movies, and even events that happened between Star Trek Picard and the 32nd century. It could also show clips from alternate realities, such as the Mirror and Kelvin universes. That would have been a great way to hide Easter eggs for fans to discover. Overall, 
This two-parter was the absolute highlight for me in the entire Star Trek Discovery series. The return of the Terran Empire and the Guardian of Forever were pleasant surprises that I was not expecting, and I hope this is a sign of good things to come with this series. No show is without its faults, but I have to give this two-parter five stars. In my opinion, it earned it. If you enjoyed this review, then please show your support by leaving a like and sharing the video. Leave some comments on what you liked and disliked about these two episodes. Also, subscribing is an awesome thing because you'll get to be a part of our growing killer community. The notification bell will let you know when future reviews as well as other content are uploaded to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, and have a killer awesome day.